Um, you will have deduced from our submission that our overall, our overall um, view is that the bill should not proceed. Um, we don't believe it is improving local government and we believe that the direction of travel, in fact, of the amendments that are proposed will um, diminish the role of local government and will diminish the effectiveness of local government. Um, so uh, a couple of specific points. Um, agree very strongly with the previous submitted about the, uh, current, the current purpose of local government being retained. Um, we are amongst the many people who believe that the concept of the four well-beings should be retained because they represent um, the, the wide range of functions that local government cur currently carries out, um, things that the public values and the things that we need in our communities. And uh, we are strongly in favour of the retention of the current approach to local government that is um, signalled in the, the current legislation and um, we think would be severely undermined by the amendments that are proposed. Secondly, and again I agree with the previous submitter, um, we are opposed to the proposed powers um, for the Minister to act in relation to local authorities. We think they signal a, um, a, a very unwelcome and improper um, change in the balance between central and local government. We believe that central government has sufficient powers already to deal with, um, with local government. And the message um, implicit in the amendments is that uh, local government is in some sense a subsidiary of central government and we um, thoroughly and totally reject that idea. And um, some of you may have seen a uh, piece that was in the Dominion today um, that makes the point um, from us um, about retaining the, uh, the local voice in local government. We think that's a very important factor. Thirdly, uh, we reject the uh, premise that the fiscal responsibility requirements are needed. Uh, the theme in the, uh, the Better Local Government paper and indeed in this, um, in this bill is that councils have been profligate and that they've run up massive and unnecessary debts and we do not believe that the evidence supports that. And uh, this, the um, appendix to our submission, uh, um, some work we commissioned from Peter Harris, we believe provides you with some very useful information to inform that. Um, we believe the evidence shows that most councils have manageable levels of debt and that those debts are primarily there to ensure that infrastructure investment can be made and that the costs of that are um, uh, reflected across the whole lifetime of the asset and not simply loaded onto current uh, rate payers through um, increases in rates to pay for investment in infrastructure. Um, so we are opposed to the idea of central government through this legislation setting a cap on rates and on debt and when you put those ideas together with the proposed, proposed intervention powers we would submit that that constitutes a very serious attack on local democracy and um, we think this select committee should think very very carefully about the recommendations they make um, on that point. Addressing the PSA's stance on the bill's proposal that elected councillors should set staffing numbers and remuneration policy. Um, with regard to the remuneration policy, we believe this is unnecessary as in effect councillors already have this power as part of their role in signing off the elements of the council's total budget, so they can already do that. Currently they allocate a budget within which the chief executive can employ staff necessary to deliver on the range of services that the council has agreed to. Um, this system works and we see no benefit to be gained from changing it. Um, the proposed power to set limits on staff numbers we oppose. Um, our members believe it's inappropriate for an elected members to stray into the realms of managerial and operational authority by imposing staffing caps. As most elected members are not experts in this subject um, and that's why they employ a CEO who is suitably qualified to, to do this on their behalf. Um, the Local Government Act establishes Chief Executive's responsibility to elected members for the employment and leadership of the staff of the local authority and for setting the terms and conditions of employment. In regard to the impacts of staffing caps, at the PSA we've seen the impact that the central government public service staffing caps had. Um, 
to the effect that workloads have grown to unsustainable levels and as jobs have been cut, vacancies have been left unfilled and there's a much higher use of contractors and outsourcing. Um, setting arbitrary limits on staff numbers is a blunt instrument leading to perver perverse behaviours and unintended consequences. Um, for example, contractors aren't motivated by the same, th same things as staff are. If a member of staff is given a problem to deal with, they want to deal with it so that problem doesn't return. A roading engineer needs a road legalising. Um, if you give him the tools to get most of that work done himself, he will do. If you give um, a contractor, a consultant, the same job, they've got a vested interest in doing as much of the work themselves as possible um, and not long-term solving the problem because that's how they make their, their income. Um, we know that local authority employers oppose these proposals, knowing that they're unworkable and will not support good outcomes or good employment relations. Thank you. So those were the um, primary points we wanted to make, but we're really happy to answer any questions in the, other, in the rest of the time we have. Thank you for your submission, which, which is, is, uh, presents a different point of view again for us, which was really useful. I just want you to pick up on that last comment about the use of consultants, where you say that they are um, really incentivised to do the bulk of any work themselves because they get the most benefit out of that. But isn't the contrary to that that they then, if you've got a decent council, they then are less likely to get any further work down the track? A lot of smaller communities, you don't have a huge amount of choice in consultants. You know, um, so you are pretty much stuck with the market, and if, if the consultants collectively choose to set rates at a certain level, there's not a huge amount of impact we can have, a, a, apart from taking the work back in house. Yeah. We, we also noticed, if I if I can just add, add a point here, uh, we, we looked at the um, report of the review team on the Kuiper Council, and noted, as I imagine you have done the comments they made about the extent to which the council there had outsourced um, so many of their core functions and that that had contributed to um, poor decision making. So I guess our point here is, is a general one, that um, local government skills and functions are quite specific to local, to local government and we think it's uh, the weight of of um, uh, staffing should be people who, who permanently work in, in uh, local government. And there are some pretty compelling reasons to, uh, to not outsource yeah. core functions. And actually we think fiscally it doesn't add up. Yeah. And we've got, the, we've got the example of central government in front of us where thousands of jobs have been lost and um, millions of dollars have been spent on the... On the Thank you very much indeed, I really appreciate you coming and uh, thank you very much for your attendance.